Hello, good afternoon. It is uh, Tuesday, October 25th, and uh, I'm excited to bring the second in our series of uh, informational and demonstration webinars with ABC Clio. Today's session is all about ABC Clio resources for academic libraries. Uh, I'm joined today uh, by uh, Pamela Renfro uh, and Paul Webb coming to us from ABC Clio. And I know one of their colleagues is uh, kind of listening in as well. Um, so we're excited to be able to uh, uh, have them here today. And really that's it. I like to keep these intros short. So I'm gonna turn things over to Pam. Okay, thank you so much uh, for letting us um, join you today. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And you sh everyone should be seeing uh, the ABC Clio homepage where we have all of our listings. And so again, thank you, Paul and I are very excited to share the academic databases with you today. Please use the chat to ask questions. And then at the end of our session today, uh, we will open that up uh, to answer any questions. If you'd like to ask those verbally, we're happy to have a discussion with you. I'm going to try to keep it relatively simple today, uh, but I do want to make sure that, that we do showcase a lot of our databases because uh, we have some very unique ones. So what I'm going to do is I won't, won't show you each one in depth but I'm going to go in and out of a few different ones and focus on a specific feature uh, within each one. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and turn my camera off for right now. And um, you should still be seeing uh, my screen. Somebody let me know if you're not. Seems like that um, the little green box went away. Jeff, are you still seeing my screen? Yes, I am. Okay, very good. So what I'm uh, looking at right now is our entire collection. We have 15 databases that are uh, created for the academic uh, world as we speak. A lot of our databases are considered to be very foundational and are often used for undergraduate uh, work, uh, community college and those undergraduate uh, fields of study because they really do provide a foundation and contextual knowledge that a student would need to move on into further and deeper academic studies. And so we do have 15. I'm excited today. Uh, we're going to spend some time at the very end of our uh, time together today looking at the newest of our collection uh, called the Asian American Experience. Uh, but I want to focus for just a few minutes on what we consider to be the four core databases that really uh, provide a lot of foundational information of uh, the American government, American history, and the two world histories. We divide those between ancient and modern, and those uh, are what we consider to be very core uh, to most college experiences and also kind of mirror that high school experience that those students had. Those do have one feature that's not in the rest of the databases, and that is uh, called the playlist. So for that reason, we're going to start there today. I'm going to open up American history. And you'll quickly see that uh, we do provide different ways to utilize the resource. Of course, it's a database, so you're going to see uh, a search bar. But you also are going to notice some unique features to our database. And we're going to start out there in, the, uh, in American history looking at time periods, because this is a unique way of utilizing our databases in that it's it's very similar to the way you would perceive a textbook to be or uh, a table of contents. But we do find that, again, in undergraduate classes and community college classes, uh, our databases are often used by the instructors, and we try to make it very easy for them to go in and to um, to link to these resources within whatever learning management system they're using, Blackboard or Canvas, uh, to create their courses. And it's also often used uh, for remediation type of um, self-learning, I should say. 
So you have a student that, you know, maybe they didn't apply themselves uh, as they should have in high school. And so they have a deficit in, in learning the foundational information that's going to be covered. So we, we provide some really interesting, um, unique features in that we do have this textbook format. And so I'm going to open up just one section called the crash in the Great Depression. And what you're going to see when I open that up is, again, we have this table of contents type, type structure. We provide an overview article uh, that to me is just the right length uh, for a student uh, that's trying to grasp just foundational background materials. Uh, you'll notice there are links within where they can expand their knowledge by learning more about specific topics. You're also going to notice, I think, a unique feature to ABC Clio is that we do put in visual items within the text. And so that's a really helpful in keeping student attention uh, as they are looking through the article and reading and, and going into additional articles, that those visuals really are helpful. We know students are, are becoming more and more visual and it keeps uh, their attention to have that type of information. You'll often see primary source imagery or primary source documents there that can be opened up and enlarged and taken a look at. While I'm here, I wanna point out that every piece of uh, information within ABC Clio, we provide these student tools and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna point them out here, but you'll notice as we go through today, they're going to be available Everywhere you, we look to, and we open things up, the ability to save things, and we make it really easy for students to save things to their Google Drive, um, you'll be able to see that there's a link that can be uh, embedded into PowerPoints or multimedia uh, uh, presentations that they're doing, or again, if that instructor wants to put a link into uh, a course. Of course, full citations are going to be given here. Uh, whoever is the admin to the account uh, can set up which citation it actually displays in the article, but all three formats are going to be available in the citation link. And we do export to EasyBib, Noodle Tools, and RefWorks if those are uh, uh, tools that your library subscribes to. And I am signed in as an admin. Uh, which you would give that uh, access or educator access to your faculty. Um, and that would also allow that faculty to create a research list for their students. Um, and that would be available at, at for them or for you as a librarian to create as well. We have a listen feature if that's needed and a translate feature that uh, will translate the article into several different languages. And then you'll notice that beyond this, uh, I can move around very easily in the article by picking and choosing things in the table of contents that are uh, applicable to what I'm looking for. You also notice to the left-hand side, there are reference articles. So with this topic, there are uh, over a thousand uh, reference articles. I can open that up. I have the ability then to filter that by type. And so we really try to make uh, our information easy for students to access. And by putting it here in this textbook format, uh, they're able to know that everything that is listed here is going to be applicable to the topic. Um, and so we do this really to kind of assess, uh, to help the students assess uh, what information is applicable to the topic. Again, rather than doing a search, we know that some students are intimidated by that. And so this is kind of a, a way to get them into searching on their own by having them come in and they can, you know, um, choose what they're looking for. Perhaps they're looking for uh, political cartoons. They're able to come in and, and filter those results. Anytime we have a, a, a resource that is visual, there'll be a thumbnail of that. So you can, that photo that the student can look at before they open that up. And then we have the playlist. And so this again is going to be found in American history, uh, American government, and world history ancient and world history modern. We have these playlists of videos that are lectures 
that go along with the, the topics that are covered in this Great Depression to the New Deal. Uh, these are very well done. Um, they're going to be closed captioned. Um, the transcripts are given. And so again, another way for the student to learn independently, or if an instructor wants to add this uh, to their course, the link is there given for them. So I think you'll find there's a lot of uses for um, these playlists. And I think it's a really uh, interesting feature uh, that you may not find in other databases. If I'm in uh, the database itself, I can always switch and go into an additional database if I'd like to. So I'm going to pop into a pop culture universe. Again, we won't be going into every uh, database today, but I'm going to focus on um, some features that are available. Uh, the next feature I wanted to point out are the subject indexes. Now, this isn't available in every database, but it is in many. And our editors are uh, working to uh, add this feature to each of the databases. So I'm going to open that up. And I think it's a very unique way of looking at the database. It gives the student a really good idea of all of the contents that are within the database. Uh, this one, of course, Pop Culture Universe is a, is a really unique database in that it covers icons, idols, and ideas of the United States by decades. But here's a way that we can look at it also uh, by uh, subjects. So if I wanted to show you uh, the variety of subjects that are covered, everything from transportation and, and travel, books and literature, food and drink, so I'm going to pop in and open up books and literature, and then you can see we can come in and we can see information about different novels that um, are covered in the database. And then I again can filter from there if I want to take a look at things that way, or I can sort by uh, category or by title, however I would like to do that. Again, Always the, uh, the way, you know, we can always search and we're going to do that in just a moment, but I wanted to show you a subject index because I think that's very unique. We have a great series called um, The American Mosaics, and I wanted to uh, take a look at just a moment. We're going to pop into uh, The American Indian Experience, and here we will actually uh, do a search. So you're going to see as I'm opening these up that they they do all follow that same type of format where you have the you know the search of course is going to be on every page that we look at the ability to filter and then some additional unique features as well and then if you want to learn more about uh, the database itself you can click on about and learn more about uh, the editorial. Uh, count, excuse me, the advisory board and the editorial staff that created the database. So let's do a search here on Indian removal. And with this search, I think you're going to see some really unique filters that are involved. Of course, I have over 200 results here. And of course, I can sort these I can filter in different ways, but I think this is very interesting here. I can also filter by time periods. I can filter by regions, which is going to cover the regions of the United States. There are some states that I can uh, filter by. So if I'm looking specifically uh, to see if there's any mention of Wisconsin here, I can choose to filter that way. I also can choose to filter by select tribes of Indians. So I think this is really unique in the way that I can filter my results. I've put in my topic, I've done my search, and then I'm able to come in and take a look. Um, I'm going to open up this timeline. You see that it's very clear in our results what you're going to be looking at. And again, uh, because I have it set to where it's going to highlight uh, what I have searched, uh, that that is an option you have in the admin. It's going to highlight any time it sees the word Indian or removal. Uh, this is a timeline. And then I can also see where it does discuss uh, Wisconsin becoming a state. 
and uh, some information about Wisconsin is toward the bottom of this. So a lot of information, here's where Wisconsin became a state. So again, really unique in the way that we can filter by state, by region, and by tribe within this database on the American Indians. I'm gonna move now and into the Latino American experience. And we're gonna look at a collection. So on the homepage of each of these databases, uh, you're going to see featured a primary and secondary source collection. And um, this is a new feature. Uh, you'll notice if you are a user of ABC Clio databases, our databases did get um, an, a cosmetic upfresh, I guess you'd say, uh, just recently. And this is one of the newest features where we are highlighting a primary source um, collection. And in the Latino American experience, uh, the collection that is highlighted here is the Brocero Program Collection. Uh, at the top, there's a couple of paragraphs that really explains um, the uh, program where uh, uh, the, these first person narratives were created and collected. And here we can go in, we're going to find an article that's going to give us information uh, we're going to find the primary source document that has the government document that actually has the Bracero Agreement. Uh, you'll see photos and illustrations. And then again, there's going to be those narratives. So I can filter. If I want to take a look, there are 59 uh, letters and narratives here. I can filter those and take a look specifically at what those look like. These are going to be in audio format. Uh, very interesting uh, to listen to. Uh, they are in Spanish. You'll see again at the beginning, we have a little bit of background foundational information uh, for whoever is reading this or listening to it. And then you'll also see that we have uh, the information in Spanish as well as the English translation available here for this audio interview. So many of our uh, collections do have this primary source collection on the homepage, and I wanted to point out this Latino American experience. I'm going to move into the African American experience, and we're going to look at another unique feature of ABC Clio academic databases, and that is the round tables that are found here. So I'm going to come in and we're going to uh, just open this up and filter and just take a look at roundtables. They're very unique in that roundtables, uh, we have gathered scholars uh, that uh, take a look at a specific question and provide their opinion uh, and their research behind uh, their opinion that they're giving here. And there are 35 roundtables included in the African American experience. Uh, they range from uh, all the way from uh, affirmative action uh, to some real uh, current uh, topics like the influence of hip hop. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to open that one up and take a look at that. But you will see, again, it's going, there's going to be some information to kind of frame uh, the question. And then you'll see uh, different views that you can take a look at, uh, then they will be labeled as viewpoints. Again, and you can learn about the contributor. Uh, if you come to the bottom of the article, you can learn more about the contributor here as well. So this is in uh, each of the da academic databases. Uh, there are very, a variety of numbers of these. It just, of course, depends on um, which database, you know, what types of content are covered. I'm gonna pop in just a moment to modern genocide and then wanna take a look at that quickly. And here we're going to take a look at um, the eBooks that are covered. So again, within each of these databases, of course, if you are searching by topic, 
if you put in a keyword here, uh, you're going to get this content. If you, you know, are looking for um, eBooks, you can do that search that way. But for this uh, today, I'm just trying to demonstrate the, the eBooks that are within the resource. So these are full context eBooks. And you can take, a, we can take a look at any of those we would like. But the entire ebook is here available to you. Uh, and many of them have 10 or more ebooks that are included. Of course, the content is included. And then it, you, you can uh, come in and read uh, chapters or whatever you would like with those ebooks. Any questions about some of those unique features that are available? If you put those in the chat. And then we're going to take a look at our newest database, the Asian American Experience. So until just recently, we had the uh, African American Experience, the American Indian Experience, and the Latino American Experience. And we had many requests and definitely saw the need to add the Asian American uh, experience. This will complement any US history courses as well as ethnic studies courses. These are, uh, all of the American mosaics are not only historical, but they do have a very cultural approach to historically marginalized groups of people that have shaped the United States history. Asian Americans are the fastest growing ethnic group in the United States with now over 20 million. Uh, this is going to have in-depth coverage of key subjects, curated content from books that are published by ABC Clio, and original content uh, that has also been curated uh, from the Korean uh, study, the Center for Korean Studies, the University of Hawaii, and the Angel Island Immigration Station. You're going to see over thousands of articles here. 21 different ethnic groups are covered uh, from East, Southeast, and South Asia. Uh, Bangladeshi Americans, uh, Pakistani Americans, Chinese Americans, Pacific Islanders, and Native Hawaiians are covered. You're going to see the um, subject areas that are covered are religion, art, literature, festivals, sports, as well as challenges that are very unique to these specific ethnic groups. Uh, the academic advisors, uh, you can find out more information again by going into about at the bottom of the database if you want to learn more about the content selection, uh, translations, more about our mission, and see our advisors here as well. So again, it's very easy to come in and take a look Let's look at those features again as they're covered here. You're going to see there are 10 ebooks and nine roundtables where our contributors have provided a range of perspectives on discussion questions and critical longstanding issues in this field of study. So let's open up the roundtables right now. We'll take a look at those uh, specifically on um, the Japanese incarceration. Was the Japanese incarceration during World War II understandable in the context of the times? So again, you're going to have the background information, uh, and then you're going to go into three different viewpoints about uh, this question. So they are covered here in depth. And again, you can learn more about the contributors by taking a look at the bottom of the article you can learn more about those contributors. Coming back to the homepage, let's do a search on a very current topic. Let's take a look at COVID. So again, you can always do your searching by using that um, search box that's found on every page. And then you can filter uh, again, by types here in the below, or I can select uh, time periods as well. I wanted also to point out one of the unique features with ABC Clio's academic databases is that uh, when you search for a, and open up a specific article, you are also going to get additional materials in this left sidebar. 
So this allows for students that are beginning their research to get their contextual uh, information to explore beyond this one article. Uh, you'll notice uh, we provide a variety of types of resources. Again, they have the, uh, the article that is given here. Again, very brief with ways to go out and learn more by following the links. And then I can get additional information like this government document on COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act of 2021. So I can get the complete government document here. I can learn more about facts and figures by opening up this table that has uh, facts and figures on hate crimes uh, by uh, different cities during 2019 and 2020. Again, the, uh, there are 21 different ethnic groups that are uh, covered in this database, and those are searchable by ethnic type. And I can do my searches there. And again, I can select time periods here. So if I've, I've done my search, and maybe I'm looking for specific information on Filipino Americans uh, during 1939 to 1965, this allows me to narrow my search to a specific time period. And again, you can see that anytime we're going to have a visual, you're going to have a small uh, thumbnail image of that. And that makes that easier for your students uh, to determine if they would like to open that up or not. I'm going to come back to the homepage. And again, uh, look at this homepage in the fact that we do have the time periods, which would allow a, a, for comparative study. If you wanted to look at a specific time period and go through the different mosaics and take a look specifically maybe at activism in uh, 1965 to 1970s, Again, you have that textbook format here. You'll notice you don't have the playlist. The playlists were only in uh, the four core. But other than that, they are very, very similar. We have the subject indexes that are found on the homepage, as well as the uh, primary, there's our subject index and our primary source collection. Here we are featuring a collection on the Japanese incarceration and the camp experiences. So again, a wonderful collection of primary and secondary sources available for students. Lastly, I want to point out uh, the one of our uh, works in progress is the Academic Skills Center. Right now there are uh, information uh, videos uh, on writing. So we know that that is another skill that students uh, utilizing the databases might uh, be working toward in their uh, early years in college. And so we have created uh, these videos to really help students talk about how to write their thesis, how to craft an argument, how to choose the right evidence, how to avoid plagiarism, and the power of revising their work. So those are just a few of our databases that we have available. Um, I wanted to point those out to you today. Again, there are 15 and we invite you to uh, ask any questions you might have now. We try to keep um, everything brief today uh, and would invite you to unmute yourself if you'd like and uh, to ask, ask any questions you might have. Okay, hopefully everyone's able to do that now. Uh, if you so wish, uh, Catherine or Tom, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, feel free to unmute yourself and, and do so. Well, maybe not. <laughs> so uh, I, get, I think that probably means you did a perfect presentation. Oh, I think maybe Catherine has unmuted. I can see the icon has changed. Catherine, okay. did you want to ask something? Oh, no, I was just going to say thank you. Oh, well, I appreciate it. I'll echo Catherine in, in saying thank you so much, uh, Pamela, for joining us today and doing another great bang up uh, presentation showcasing some of the great resources available for our academic members.
Well, please let us know if you have questions in the future. We'd be happy to answer those. Okay, uh, and also we are recording this session, so anyone who's watching the recording, please do feel free to reach out uh, to anyone here at Wills, or uh, if you've got contact information for any of the ABC Clio folks, feel free to reach out to them as well. I'm sure they'll be glad to hear from you. Uh, and uh, Pam, I think we've got one more session all about K-12s. We do. It's in Absolutely. November. Absolutely, right? November, yes. Okay, well, we will, uh, I'm sure we'll talk before then, but if not, I'll see you then. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone and have a great day.